What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a very basic login screen in Swift UI, and it's going to look like this one over here. So essentially we can go ahead and click on username and we can enter a username such as Mario2021 and then we can go ahead and enter a password which in this case will be A, B, C and one, two, three. Then when we go ahead and click on login it's going to load and take us to the login page where we have Mario 2021. And if we go back, we can also simulate some wrong credentials, such as putting a username that does not exist. If you click on login, it's going to give you a red box. And let's pretend the username's correct, but the password isn't. Then we're going to have a red box on the password. So as you can see, it's a very simple login screen with some very simple functionality, and it's going to be pretty cool because you're going to learn a bit more on how Swift UI works with this simple project. But as always, the first thing we want to do is hold Shift Command plus N to create a new project. We will go ahead and click on App, and we will go ahead and type in Login Screen UI, or whatever product name you want to give it. And of course, we'll be using Swift UI for the interface and Swift for the language. So just go ahead and click on next if you have those selected and click on create project. Now with that being done, we can go ahead and close this sidebar here and this sidebar over here. And then we have to go ahead and change this to an iPhone 13 and try to minimize this so we have some more space to work inside the app. So the first thing we're going to get out of the way are the state variables. So inside here, you can go ahead and type in add state private var username because that's the first field we want and that's going to equal an empty string and we're going to do the same thing for the password so add state private var password which will equal an empty string then we have add state private var wrong username which is going to create the red box around the user field in case they insert a wrong username and that's going to equal zero initially. And then we have to do the same thing for the wrong password. So private var wrong password is going to equal zero. And finally, at state private var, which is going to be showing login screen, which will be set to false because we need to programmatically show the next screen. And that's going to be depending on whether the username and the password is correct or not. So that's the first step of creating this login screen. Next, let's go ahead and try to take care of the UI. And to do this, we're going to go ahead and first create a navigation view. And for this navigation view, we do not want the navigation bar. So we're going to go ahead and type in dot navigation bar hidden. And we're going to set that to true so we don't have the navigation title. And it should appear as a blank screen because we have not inserted anything yet. But next we want to go ahead and insert a Z stack because we want to give it some nice backgrounds. And to do this, we'll go ahead and first give it a color of dot blue and it's going to ignore the safe area. So we're going to have a full blue screen. And to keep this UI simple, we're going to go ahead and add a circle with a scale of 1.7 and a foreground color of dot white with an opacity of 0.15. Then we can go ahead and copy this and paste it right under. Except this time we will go ahead and type in 1.35 and we'll have it as a very bright white without an opacity. And we actually have to move this navigation bar hidden to the inner layer for it to actually function. As you can see earlier it was being pushed down because there was an invisible title over there but to actually apply this modifier to the navigation view, we need to put it inside the navigation view so that everything will be centered and that there will be no invisible title over here. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a V stack. And inside the V stack, we're going to start with a text that says login with a font of dot large title. And I want to give it a dot bold and some padding. Below that, we're going to go ahead and create a text field that says that the user should provide a username and the text is going to be a binding variable of username. Then we have to provide a dot padding followed by a frame. And inside the frame, I'm going to provide a width of 300 and a height of 50. Then I want to give it a background with a color of black with an opacity of 0.05. 
And of course we want a corner radius because that looks great. So a corner radius of 10. And finally, we should also provide the border that will appear if the user picks something wrong, such as a wrong username that does not exist or a wrong password. So here we'll go ahead and type in border, which will be dot red with a width and it has to be a CG float. So we just have to pass whatever value we get to a CG float. And inside here we'll type in wrong username. So right now it's set to zero, but if we pick the wrong password, it's going to enter the value of two in there and it's going to select it. So that's the logic behind this part over here. Now, luckily to create a password, all we have to do is copy this field over here, paste it inside, and we just need to make some minor adjustments. For example, the first thing we have to do is change this to a secure field so that when the user enters a password, it gives you the dark bullet points and it hides the password so no one can see it. So here we'll just go ahead and type in password and this will change to dollar sign password. Then we just need to change this to wrong password. Finally, we just need to go ahead and provide a button and this button is going to tell the user that they can log in. And maybe we want to give it a different effect because the default button doesn't fit the UI. So here we're going to have to go ahead and type in foreground color is going to be set to white and then the frame is going to have a width of 300 and a height of 50, just like the text boxes. Then we can go ahead and type in background color, which is going to be a color dot blue. And we need a corner radius. So corner radius is going to equal 10. Now inside the button, we need to provide some logic to authenticate the user. And we will take care of that as soon as we're done with the UI. So we actually also have to add a navigation link so it can send the user to the user page once they successfully log in. And to do this in a very easy way, we're just going to go ahead and create a navigation link with a destination like this, which is going to equal a text view that says you are logged in and an at simple followed by an interpolation that inserts the username. Then we also have to add a comma and say, is it active? And this will be set to showing login screen so we can programmatically use this link. And of course, this actually takes a view, such as a button or something else. And in this case, we're just going to insert an empty view so it's completely invisible and it doesn't crash the program. So, so far, so good. If we go ahead and test this, we can click on that and we can type something here and something here and we can log in, but nothing's going to happen because we've not defined the function to actually do anything yet. So let's go ahead and create the authenticate user function. So right before the last curly bracket, we're going to go ahead and create a function called authenticate user. And it's going to take a username of type string followed by a password of type string as well. Now inside here, of course, you want to insert your own database and your own logic. But as a test example, we can go ahead and type in if username dot lowercase, because this will not be case sensitive, is equal to the username you want to authenticate, such as Mario 2021, then we can go ahead and set wrong username to continue to be zero because nothing's wrong. We do not want a red outline. Then we also have to go ahead and check if the password dot lowercase, which is also because we do not want that to be case sensitive, is equal to their password, abc123. Then we will say the wrong password should continue to be zero and that we can actually show in the login screen because both the username and the password are correct. So show login screen is going to be set to true. Else we're going to say that the wrong password should have a border radius of two and we need to do the same thing for the username. So else wrong username will be set to two. So now all we need to do to make this work is insert it inside the button. So authenticate user with the username of username and the password of password. So if we go ahead and run the program and inside here we type in Mario 2021 and here we type in ABC123, we can go ahead and click on login and it's going to take us to the Mario screen. It's going to log us in to the next page. And if we click on back, it will take us back to the home screen. And of course, this was a very simple example. You definitely want to handle this in a better way than I showed you below here, because as you can see, one mistake you'll see in this program is that we have a back button. And in general, you don't really want that when you log in 
but for the purpose of this mini project, I think it's fine. You can definitely remove that later and we will as we build more complex apps. But with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this mini tutorial. And if you have any requests, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.